Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing some mods. Okay. Today we're doing some mods to support longevity in our CP4 in this 2020 Ram Beast 3.0. Even though we may not keep that CP4 for too long, and I'll, we'll talk about that in a future video, but we partnered with Black Market Performance. They have these cat filter kits. They have one for the front on the side of the engine block. They also have the water separator that goes to the rear. We're gonna be doing an install on that. We're also getting ready for our seven to 800 horsepower with our fleece lift pump. This lift pump's capable of that. And we already got the tank down, as you can see. Josh is gonna talk about that real soon when he comes back. But yeah, here's your harness, because some lift pump probably draws a little bit more power. So fleece supplies you with a harness that's got your relay right there. Basically you run this to your battery and then it looks like this is pretty much plug and play here. But we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. But these bad boys, look at this. Look at this billet, man. Look at that, that's sharp. These bad boys. Now this one's gonna be easy. The water separator back here in the rear, very easy to install. You, it's, just, it's pretty tight in the front. We'll see what we can film with that. We'll do our best, maybe we'll sneak the GoPro in there. But this, we'll show you where this goes. And Black Market Performance provides you with everything. So Josh, what do you think the benefits, what are your opinion with the benefits with going fleeces lift pump? What, versus like other setups? Yeah, like Fast or Air Dog. I mean, if you're under like the 800 horsepower level, I think that the fleece is the way to go, just because it's a super clean install. I mean, you can do a fleece pump with a cat filter kit like we're doing, either Black Market or Weber's kit, and you have like, the filters you can change just like factory, it's super cheap. Um, you don't have a pump hanging down from your fender well. You don't have additional noise from a pump. It's, it's as if it was factory, but it supports more power. So in my opinion, this is like 100% the way to go unless you're making like huge power. Yeah, and our, so, our goal is end top 800 horse with this yeah, truck. exactly, which this will do perfectly. So Great. this is the ticket, it's super, super nice install, which is why I personally like it. And it installs nice, I mean, other than you gotta pull a tank, but it's, I mean, you saw it's a yeah. 15 minute procedure to pull a tank. You gotta add a little bit of wiring, but it's really, really simple. And the only thing that hung us up was the filler neck. Yeah, which well, you just gotta pull the fender liner. Yeah. yeah. And that was, that was, that was clutch, taking that fender liner out to get to it. Yeah, they're not, not too bad. All right, I got, we got one more question, because I know this is gonna come up in the comments, guys. These cat filters, are these better than factory filters? I know they're cheaper. I, oh man, uh, from uh, what I understand, yes, but I, I don't know what the factory situation is on the 2020 trucks, so probably, but to be, uh, to be determined. We, I ran it on Beast 2.0, I had the cat filter kit, and yeah, I, the, I had zero issues with the cat filter. That's actually what, a $20? Yeah, it's like yeah, a twenty dollar filter yep, one versus. Row yep. These are great filters, so. And this is probably about the same, about twenty five, yeah, thirty dollar filter. It's going to provide, you know, the same or better than factory, and the same or better than like an air rubber fast would provide. It's going to so. it's going to save you some money too, guys. The only thing that we had a little bit of concern that we didn't really, I mean, well, it's just a little bit of a concern is the rear water separator. the 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 water sensor is actually. It's no, not this they one move here. it to the yeah. side. Somewhere. Yeah, so it's up top. It's yeah. not going to be at the bottom of your water separator. But if there's water coming from your tank, I'm sure yeah, it will catch it. Yeah, you have two sensors still. Yep. Like you got a sensor there, a sensor in the front. If you got water, you're going to catch it. So it's really not. That was the only concern that I had whatsoever. But I'm not too concerned because, like I said, I ran this before. I ran something your, similar. Your drain valve and filter and stuff. Yeah. You can drain water out really easy. It's, it's pretty uncommon that you even get water anyway. I, they might actually change the filter in the back. I didn't see the wire hanging down, did you? For the water You know what? Filter. Oh yeah, look yeah. at that. It's in the top on this one. So it is in the top of the, the, the fit gen, guys. The sensor is at the top of the, yeah, anyway. It's, it's a little different than fourth gen. Yeah. It looks pretty similar though, but like, for the most part run the wiring now because everything's out of here um you got your two tank straps filler filler neck and vent two fuel lines electrical connector and a vent line that's and, it and you gotta unhook this uh for the def hoses for the def fill but other than that tank is super easy to pull somebody could do this in their drive with a floor jack and a piece of wood honestly but there's one thing that you should probably do first how much fuel should you leave in this? Yeah, <laughs> not a half a tank. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I did. I probably just a little under a half. It's it's heavy, guys. The less fuel, the easier. All 
All right, guys, we're getting ready to start installing the cap filter kit for the rear of the water separator. Right now, Josh is draining the there. filter housing. Yeah, there it goes. It's coming out nicely. Okay. Plugs on the back side up there. It's hard to. There we go. It's just one plug and two quick connect fuel lines. Yeah, the rear is really simple to install. Yeah. I would have to say easier on the fifth gen than it was on the fourth gen. Well, you that had to kit's add, like, a little different. Yeah. You're not, it's just because you're not adding another filter. Got those two fuel lines disconnected. Very wrench. Two bolts on the back. Or nuts, two nuts, sorry. 13. Same as the fourth gen. And that's it. So here's the rear water separator adapter, cat filter adapter. We got the two fittings on, as you can see, the longer one goes to the rear. This is where it's gonna sit in a truck like this and mount into the frame of the truck. So we got that on. The O-rings are in there. Put a little bit of oil to install that on the, the threads. And then we have this seal installed and then we have the supplied new water sensor. So, and this is gonna plug into your factory harness. Pretty basic, pretty simple guys, really easy to do. Don't need to do this at a garage but for video purposes, because it's easier to have Josh do it and I talk about it and you know we bounce back and forth when we're doing the installation. So that's pretty much it. You can use an adjustable wrench to tighten these bad boys down. We tighten this down pretty much by hand, just went a little bit past it and you're good to go there. Just All right. gonna spin the filter on now, that'd be a little easier. I'll have to snug it up once we get it in. You put a little bit of lube on there the threads go. before we put it up there. I'm just gonna pop into the factory lines and plug in and go. Yeah, buddy. Should be nice and easy. Josh is pushing the adapter through the two holes on the frame. And just put the two nuts back on and... Tighten it down with a 13 mil. Put the lines back on, plug in the Flip sensor. In. Done. And you don't have to take out your fuel tank to do this, guys. <laughs> Gives you a little more room now. <laughs> yeah, that's why we were like, oh, let's, let's just install this now. Let's get it done. They changed this bracket from the 4th gen. Like the 4th gen, you could get a, a socket, socket in here. Yeah. This one, you you can't. Which could be a pain if studs are rusty. But luckily, luckily they're not. When you're reinstalling the fuel lines, guys, make sure it's you had the lock completely undone. Push it down, it'll seat in. You'll feel it seat into place. Then you put your lock back on and you give it a tug. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> That's a little bit more of a, a bump. A little aggressive. Yeah, a little aggressive. Put the lock back this in this one. Cool. That's it. Mm -hmm. Snug it up. Plug the sensor back in. Done and done. Done. Rear water separator installed that easy, guys. That's super easy. So before we finish and go to the front and install the front cat filter kit, we are going to install the fleece lift pump first. It just installs like any factory sending unit, which is nice. So you bang your little ring off. Fish this out. Fuel out of there. Throw that in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> they use their new O-ring. Normally I would clean that like really, really well, but this thing, there's literally no dirt up here. Yes. Yeah. 
The truck's got 3,000 so miles. It's so new, yeah. Normally we'll brake clean these and blow them out with air, but there's not really, not really any dirt in there, so. We got a little tiny bit under the lock ring, but. So when you guys buy your brand new fit gen, you just gotta come here right away and have Josh install your fleece so you don't get any dirt in your fuel tank. Yeah, we like working <laughs> on new trucks. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get asked this. Will this void your factory warranty? Yes, there's a potential that this could void your factory warranty. That's the life I live, guys. Trying to get all these new mods done to the new truck so you guys, as they, the trucks are on the road for a while and they've been out, you guys have all the videos to see how to do this type of stuff to your truck and why we do this type of stuff to the truck. Really nobody would even know this was in there though. Yeah. Well, everyone's watching this video, Josh, so everyone's gonna know it's in there. And that's nice. Yeah. It's nice, nice. Police does make some nice stuff. That, they do. I need one of those razor blades. These. Yeah, I'll be honest with you guys, it looks like a factory lift pump, minus the top. You wouldn't know. Yeah, the top's different. I know they changed the, I think they put two pumps in instead of, I think there's just a single in the factory one, if I remember right. It's pretty stock appearing though. It's nice. Yeah, it's cool. our new level sensor. Make sure that it doesn't have any clearance issues. And we just need our new O-ring. Fish that in. Do you hear the little bowl filling yeah, up? Yeah, it's filling up. Guys, just make sure that green O-ring is uh, fully seated in a place that doesn't bounce out. The groove. Just make sure it doesn't bounce out of the groove, but it's it's in there, it's good. Because yeah. you don't want this leaking as your fuel's sloshing around in your tank. Yeah. Should we actually see what you're doing? No. No? Okay. I can feel. So right now you're plugging in the fuel lines and the harness? I'm trying to. Sorry guys, we can't get a camera up in there. Well, we might be able to stick the GoPro up there and show them after it's done. Yeah, you might. It's yeah. probably not even gonna... Just gotta clip this. DF lines back in. guys so we have the tank back in I'm gonna try to show you up here I kind of see the top of the the lift pump now or the setting unit uh, we've got not much to connect up there just our two fuel lines you can see the one with the blue clip on it um, the wiring into the center of the setting unit and then we got our vent line reattached it sits right up on top of the back of the tank here there's our vent line and then we're gonna start working on our semi or our filler neck and vent tube from the fender well. But that's it. So, All right. so the hardest part about this installation before you get down, Josh. The filler neck. Filler neck and vent tube are kinda crappy to access on these. Legit. Legit hardest part. Not terrible, but not fun. 
Okay, so the rear is all put back together. Just running the harness up to the front of the engine right now, into the engine compartment per se. Fully supplies you with an S ton of uh, zip ties to zip tie it nicely and neatly up there. We're going to wait to install the front cap filter be just because it, there's not... Where's the flash? Some other stuff. Yeah, we, we got some other stuff planned in this general area right here. Um, we would have... I pulled one of those fuel balls out before. There is less room to pull it out on this truck. I mean, I with this with all this here, we'd probably have to pull that out or at least remove this down here. I'm sure someone on YouTube is going to be like, no, no, you definitely could do it, but yeah, we why? Probably, we probably could, but not today. Yeah, like why go through the hassle if we're going to do something here? So we're going to do something here and we're going to do that when we do that. Sounds good. And this is pretty simple too, guys. This is basically Power yeah, hot Power ground and relay. We just got to find a nice place to put the relay and Yep. We're also doing things different with this truck, huh? We're doing some of the fueling stuff first before we do something on that side of the engine, which is completely different on the fifth gen too. All right, guys, we're pretty, we're done. So the only thing left to do is to prime the system. The nice thing with these new, new trucks, the fourth gens and the fifth gens, all you need to do is put the truck to run, don't start it, and then do that, what is it, about five, six times, Josh? Yeah, five or ten times. Five or ten times. Yeah, I think we have to, we had to do it as much as fifteen times before, and just keep cycling it until the system's completely prime, and then it'll start. But yeah, Josh got some loom, split loom, made this look a little bit nicer rather than having an orange, bright orange wire coming across here. Um, we just put the the relay down behind here because you're never going to see it. It's zip tied behind there. You're never going to see it. We didn't. He didn't, didn't want to drill in and put a self tapper in, so it looks clean, very clean. You can't even tell. Well, you can, but not really. You get what I'm saying. Um, we will come back to that. I promise you we'll be doing an install video on that as well. Um, but the main things, the main things for your CP4 is don't run your truck under a quarter of a tank. Try to keep at least a quarter of a tank and above. Um, Filtration is very important because anything gets inside that CP4, it's going to, it's, it's, definitely gonna affect the life of it thing guys I want to know it's like this you're not gonna notice any power difference at all with the, these mods we did today these are supporting mods for future mods that we plan on doing these are um, with the with the beast 2.0 build this is something I didn't do with the beast 2.0 so we're gonna have the constant pressure going to our injection pump and then we're gonna have to uh, do some upgrades up there at the injection pump and then we're gonna do some upgrades with the injectors and then we're going to do some upgrades with the turbo so we're doing it in that order this time well at least that's the plan well unfortunately my gopro cut out like good ending portion of that video um these measures that we took are to prolong the life of your cp4 adding the cat filter water separator in the rear and adding the cat filter to the side of your engine block you can change your filters cheaper and more often um, there's going to be people out there arguing, saying OEM is better than the cat filters. Uh, I beg to differ. I think the cat filters are just as good, if not better, than OEM, and they're a lot cheaper to replace. In conjunction to that, putting the fleece lift pump in, you're going to have consistent fuel pressure going to your CP4, which is very important. And like I was saying in the video, never let your tank get below a quarter tank. So keeping your diesel fuel pressure consistent keeping it clean will prolong the life of your cp4 even though i'm probably going to be taking mine out but these are all options if you want to keep yours in next <laughs> at the end of the video i showed that i curbed two of my wheels so i definitely am going to be swapping out the wheels you'll see that in an upcoming video and we're also adding well you probably already see it we're adding some baja designs squad squadron lights already in the truck so we're going to be doing an install video on that as well that'll be in the next video hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you're stopped by for the first time make sure you smash tap do something to that subscribe button make sure you check out bsynthetics.com i'm an amsoil dealer if you purchase your amsoil products from me it helps support the channel there's also all kinds of information on my website allbeastproducts.com as well where you can get to my amsoil and also see my partners and also purchase merch to help support the channel we love you guys we'll see you on the next upload